Welcome back to the Punch's Chance YouTube channel. I'm delighted to be joined by the Welsh Ed Ewan himself, uh, Dan Francis, as he likes to name himself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, today I think we're just sitting down and talking about the card you've put together with uh, Richie Garner down in Slanesley on August the 17th, which is going to be an historic night really for Welsh boxing. Uh, we'll start off with the first fight, uh, Levi Griffiths and Nathan Darby. I think it's Levi's third professional fight. He's 2-0 and so far. If you just want to talk through that one, first of all. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys obviously giving us the time to have a, obviously a chat about um, the show in, on August the 17th. Yeah, so obviously Levi, you know, local professional from Batalbot. Um, in fact, uh, the, the managing company that I own both boxing along with Latif and Joe Latif Mohammed and Joe Yarrow we've just signed Levi's brother Harley Griffiths uh, but Levi's currently 2-0 you know he's um, you know talented amateur you know he's done really well in the amateurs he's done really well on the unlicensed scene you know really good fights and he's 2-0 currently and he's coming into August the 17th to, to make a statement you know to start pushing his pushing his name on the Welsh rankings hopefully to get some Welsh titles down the line because that's what we'd like to do, obviously keep putting them Welsh titles on. You know, he's fighting Nathan Darby. You know, Nathan Darby was on our last show down in down in the Selwyn. Um, you know, put on a good performance. He's a good, solid away fighter. So it should be a good test for Levi, you know, to see what, what, what he's got in the tank. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a good opportunity for him to a little step up to what he's had before and then see where he pushes on then after that, you know. Yeah, in terms of uh, fighters on the card that are sort of progressing early in their career, another one, you know, Lewis Parfit uh, fighting Richard Elm. We've seen Lewis fight his pro uh, debut down in Cardiff just a few weeks ago. He looked very impressive and uh, looking forward to seeing him in the ring again. Uh, Willie Gallini as well, another one that's quite early on in his career. Both of them very good fighters, I think very technically skilled. Uh, what are you expecting from them two on the night? Well, no, Lewis um, had his debut, obviously, as he did on the on the Sanaga show uh, in the Vale, uh, not long, not so long ago. Um, and as you said, you know, we watched it, and you know, he's a talented, talented boxer. He's trained by um, Brett Parry, you know, and you know, Brett had Ethan on that night. You know, had a fantastic result, and Lewis is wanting to go that same way. You know, he's already got his eyes on the Welsh title. You know, that that's, that's um, he's looking at, he's looking to build towards to get, and he's got a. Tough test in, in Richard Helm. You know, Richard Helm is a very, very experienced away fighter. You know, he's been around the block, he's been in the game for a long, long time. And it's only Lewis's second fight. But Lewis 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 can box, he can he can he can punch, you know, he, he's he's a good 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 all round fighter. I know Brett's building a nice little stable in that gym now. So um yeah, it's a good test for uh for Lewis. And then obviously you go on to Willie. Willie's fighting Malam Malam Valera. Um obviously um Malam had that unfortunate incident in his in his last in his last fight. You know he was involved with that uh, with the fighter lost his life. Rest in peace. Um, but you know Malam has got up. He's ready to go. And he's taking he's taking on Willie. You know Willie is um, Willie is a fantastic boxer. You know Willie's got a fantastic story behind him as well. You know he was Welsh Amateur for the West winners when he was younger. Took a massive. Uh, gap from the sport I think it was about 10 years out of the sport he, he ballooned up in weight you know, and he's brought all that weight back down now and, he, and he's making his, his move now in Welsh boxing you know, he's managed by Richie Garner who um, obviously is, is uh, promoting the show along, along with myself and he's, he's making that move towards the, to the Welsh title it's his first six rounder with his hopes of obviously getting the result in this one um, I've spoken to Willie he has said that he's um, coming for the big KO win uh, to make a statement so he can look to get the Welsh title next. But let's be honest, Malam is a very, very good fight there. You know, he's he's two he's two wins, four losses, I believe, Malam. You know, but he but he can box and he and he's in, he's always in shape and he he comes to have a go. So it should, it could it could be one of the fights to steal steal the show. You know, but um, we're looking forward to it. Willie's test now for six rounds, and uh, let's see what happens and let's see what the result is out of that fight. Yeah, Willie's a really interesting one, I think. I think we've spoke to him previously, and I think he's definitely got sort of aims and ambitions for titles, Welsh title, I think, definitely being one for him. Another fighter that's, well, was out of the ring for a long time, uh, James Todd has recently come back. Uh, I think we caught him last time in Llanelli with the draw down there with Robbie Chapman, I believe. Uh, he's had another fight then that didn't quite go his way. He got stopped in that one. He's shown his resilience. He's still going. Uh, 
you'd be back in the ring again, obviously in Slinetti on August seventeenth. What are you expecting from him on that night? You know, James Todd, you know, he's he's had he's been there, he's, he's done it, you know, he's been, he's fought out in America, he's fought for the old WBU belt, the WBF, like a version of that belt. Obviously, I think it was an international version of it out in America years ago. And obviously, he took that he took that gap, and he made that he made that come back. You know, and if you look at him, he's another one. He, he put a story up the other day on his on his um, Instagram where he stated that obviously he'd got he'd gone to a dark place. You know, he'd put on a lot of weight, and he, he's made himself come. He's done the journey of losing all that weight to come back down and make his return to the ring. But Toddy, you've got to give it to him. You know, he's willing to fight anybody. He doesn't care who they are. You, you've given an opponent, he'll say yes. You know, he. I remember when we matched him for the for his return in, in the Selwyn um, back back a few months ago. We matched him against um, an away fight that he didn't want that when he wanted somebody to test him, and he took on Robbie Chapman. You know, as we know, Ro- Robbie Chapman is known as the caretaker. You know, he and he and many fighters Robbie's been in against the best. You know, and he's got a lot of draws against them. Some say if you get a draw in, in, in away, it could technically mean a win, but who knows, Nick? But Toddy also then decided I'm going to take on another test, and he went and took on an, an unbeaten fighter in his in his own home backyard. And unfortunately, the result didn't go Toddy's way. But it sh- he showed his resilience. He showed his toughness. He didn't give up, you know. And he and he give his give his all. But Toddy's making his way back now to Knechtley. He's fighting against Josh Cook. You know, we've seen Josh Cook in the ring before in the brand win on one of our shows against Willie Gilhaney. He took Willie four rounds. You know, he, it'll be a good, be good, good fight for for Toddy. You know, chance for him to show what what he's been learning and developing after the last fight. And uh, hopefully Toddy will come away with that W and can push forward and maybe get himself in the picture for Welsh titles, etc. going forward, you know? And on to the next fight then, another debut on the night. Uh, JD Cuervo, I know he's been training a lot with some very skilled fighters in the gym with, uh, I believe it's Gary Lockett, it is, yeah. I've uh, seen him uh, even with the likes of uh, a lot of Welsh fighters that he's yeah, been training cool. with. Uh, including Joe Cordina, I think was one that yeah. he'd spent a bit of time with sparring. Uh, I'm very interested to see. Obviously, I haven't caught him fighting before, but very interested to see him on the night. Uh, have you had much of a chance to speak to him, or what are you expecting from him? So yeah, I've spoken a bit to JD on Instagram. You know, talking about him being on the fight. But JD is actually co-managed by Leeton and Joe Cordina, so he's actually managed by Joe Cordina as well. Um, you know, so. The Welsh Wizards himself, you know, is passing on his knowledge to, to the young, to the younger fighters, you know, and what a, what a what a combination to have there, you know. Um, but JD, you've, you've seen him in the gym with Gary Lockett, you know, one of the best trainers and managers in the whole all of the UK. I think Gary is, you know, and he's got that vast experience and knowledge um, to pass on to these young fighters. And there's no one, not many managers out there to give the knowledge and support that Gary does to his, you know, and looks after them the way that he does. Um, but JD is coming down to make his debut. You know, it's fantastic to have someone like him on the show to make his debut on, on August the seventeenth. And I and like appreciate um, Lee and and Joe for allowing him to make his debut on on the the uh, showdown at the Selwyn on August the seventeenth. But we keep moving. You know, he's going to come there now and hopefully progress. He's in a four rounder against uh, Stefan Vincent, the 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 B. You know, and Stefan's is a good another one, another good learning fight for his debut somebody's going to come and try and take him the rounds but JD needs to come down there and put on a show doesn't he you know and put on a show and show that show his fans that are buying tickets of what he's got and what's to come and the next fight then I want to talk about an interesting one that the uh, heavyweight division uh Anis Taj and Torby Vermeer I've seen him uh Torby recently he was fighting a Sellers Park on the uh Chris Billam Smith card uh didn't quite go as way on that night but still a very good experience a stadium show uh, not many fighters in their whole career will get that sort of fight uh, a very interesting fight I think and looking forward to seeing how it's going to go what are you expecting from our one? Well you know it's, it's brilliant to have a niece down a niece is managed by um, ourselves at Vault Boxing we recently signed a niece I know and it's fantastic to have him on the team um, but Toby as well, you know, me and Toby speak a lot. Toby's got a, another, I know we've said a lot a few times in this in this conversation already today, but another fantastic story from where he's come from, you know, obese to boxer. Um, you know, he's come from very high weights and he's lost all the weights. He's done the unlicensed scene, he's done the amateur scene and he's turned professional. And as he said, he's just living his dream every single day. You know, he fought at, he's, he's fought at, uh, 
on Queensbury shows, he's fought on the boxer show at Sellers Park, you know, and you could see he was dancing his way into the ring and, and he was loving it. Obviously, it didn't go his way. You know, he did get stopped, unfortunately, you know, and but he's having a go, you know, and you can't take any any cre any credit away from him. You know, you've got to respect the fact that he's got inside that ring and he's given it his best. But on that other hand, he has spoken to me and he said he is training very, very hard for this fight. You know, he, he just, there was an opportunity he couldn't turn down and you can see why, you know, it was at Sellers Park, it was on Sky Sports, you know, he, he couldn't turn it down, but he's still constantly in the gym every day, you know, and I've, I've spoken to him as well. You know, he, he's out of the house from 7.30 in the morning to go to work. And then he's not getting home till like nine, ten o'clock every night because he's got to go or distance. He's got to travel to work, and then then he's going training, and then he's getting home. He's got a young family, you know. So he's, you've got to give it, give him the respect and credit. He's putting in the work, but Anise has been there. You know, he's had them two fights against Vidal Riley. All right, the first one didn't go. He was on top with the first one. He got cut. It wasn't going his way. But then obviously the second one, he caught Vidal, but then Vidal just came out on top. You know, but he's been there. He's had the big. Big time experience. There was a lot of controversy around Anise's last fight um, before he took the break, where he lost to an away fighter, where everyone said that he won. But that's been that's been that's in the past now. You know we're moving forward. We've built a new team around us. He's now trained by Kyron Duffy. You know at Duffy Boxing, they're on a run at the moment with obviously the new um, female British champion as well. But Anise is coming back for titles, I can promise you that. We've got a plan in place for Anise. And, you know, he's fighting in July the 13th against Ryan Laybourne um, in Sheffield. Then he's coming down to Connectly to fight against Toby. And then one more fight then for the end of the year against another step up. And then we'll be looking at international titles above then going from there. So, But who knows? Toby's told me he's got this extravagant entrance planned. You know, he's got all this kit planned. You know, he keeps trying to tell me that these big rappers are coming in and things like that. Who knows? But he's turning Selwyn into uh, into a, a rap concert, I think. But you know, he's coming down. He said he's bringing an army of fans. So who knows what could happen? You know, it's boxing. They're in the they're in the cruiserweight division. You know, between cruiser and heavyweight, it only takes one punch, doesn't it? You know. So, but it's an exciting fight. And to be honest with you, there was plans for that fight to be for the Celtic title at cruiserweight, which hasn't been fought for since 2007. You know, and it's it's such. We thought, we've had this conversation before with me, you know, at the Bram win when I've spoken about Welsh titles and Celtic titles. They don't get fought for. You know, they're sitting there for a long, long time, you know, and like I said, the Celtic title at Crewsby hasn't been fought for since 2007. So we were hoping to get this over the line. You know, Nice was going to get a win. Toby was set to get a win because uh, he was promised something that didn't come off. But in the end, he couldn't turn down the opportunity at Sellers Park and I, and I can't blame him for that, you know, because he, 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 was, he was looked after very well, you know. But... That fight still goes on. It's an eight-rounder. The winner, if they win that, get with an eight-rounder, sets them up with the opportunities to fight for an international title. You know, because now you've got the eight rounds under the bag. So it's a fantastic fight. I personally believe Anise is going to win. Obviously, we manage him, so I've got it. But you can't help but like Toby as well. You know, Toby's a good guy. You know, we've had a few, few back and forth on some lives and stuff on Instagram. And Anise was on the live the other day, and he said that he's going to get Toby to change his Instagram handle from a beast of boxer to a beast of retired. So let's see what happens with that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm v very much looking forward to that fight. This should be an interesting one. Talking about Welsh title holders, uh, the two we're going to speak about next, obviously, a great night down in Cardiff a few weeks ago. Uh, you couldn't get two more different fights if you try, to be honest, obviously with... Angelo Dragon and uh, Ethan George both coming out as the Welsh champions on that night. They're going to be back fighting in Clenetley on August 17th. Uh, two good fights from again, and uh, it'll be nice to see them in front of sort of a home crowd coming back after those title wins. Uh, what are you expecting from them two on the night? Yeah, you know, it's great for these, these boys. You know, Angelo was supposed to be out in the last Clenetley show because it is... It's his home crown. He's got his own gym there. He's got a fantastic, thriving gym. You know, he's, he's developed standing boxing, fantastic. He's got amateur boxers out of there as well. You know, he's doing he's doing he's doing brilliant things. So it would have been nice for him to be on that show, but for we ended up having the Welsh title opportunity for him instead. So he didn't fight on the Connecticut show, but obviously he was planning on going on the road. He said that himself to you guys in his interview previously. He was on about going down the road. We had fights penciled in, and then this opportunity came for him to have the Welsh title. In my eyes, I've said it many times before, he was the uncrowned Welsh title 
holder for years after this fight with Christian Tools. He definitely won that fight in my eyes. But everyone, it's, an, it's boxing. There's opinions involved in it, isn't there? You know, so everyone has an opinion on night. Everyone sees a fight differently. You know, we can look at that with the scorecards that we see all the time. You know, everyone's got different different perspectives on it, haven't they? But Andrew's come back. He's dug in. You know, he's resilient. He's been through a lot in his life. You know, he's, he's put it on. He's done podcasts and everything. He's told that story. You know, no one digs in more than him. I, I remember having a conversation with him before the fight and said to him, look, you've been to so many dark places in in your life and you've always come out shining you know and, and this is just another one take yourself to that spot and it'll be you'll forever be known as the as the Welsh champion and that's what he did you know you saw it on the night he dug in like there was no tomorrow in fact just speaking about it now just gave me like goose pimples because he's such a nice guy as well you know Angelo he's he's a warrior you know he's, he's he's got the dog in him he doesn't give up he just keeps moving forward you know he says himself you know he's not the best boxer but no one will he's got the heart and that's what you need and on that night I think it was, I think I remember speaking to you, and I, we, we had it very, very close going into the final final two rounds. And I just think them final two rounds, the championships rounds of the Welsh title fight, he just put his head down and he just kept going and going and just didn't give up. And in the end, he just managed to, to pep Jay Tinklin for the, for the title, and he's now got let, fulfilled his dream that he's been wanting for a long, long time, and he's now the Welsh champion. But also as well with that, he has now said he's never been hungrier. You know, it's given him that extra determination, and that's why he's straight back out. You know, he's he had the cut in the fight. He's been on all day. That Welsh title went with him on all day to Tenerife, and now he's back home making a homecoming. You know, and he, he's he's coming to fight against Ivlan, trying to pronounce his surname. I think it's gets 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 done or something like that, isn't it? You know, but another all right. He's no way fighter, but it's a tough fight. You know, he comes forward, he tries to fight, he doesn't he doesn't back down, he doesn't come to lie down, but. That is what Angelo wants. You know, Angelo doesn't want that. He wants somebody who's going to come and have a go and come and have a thing. But it's nice for Angelo. He gets to walk out in front of his home crowd. You know, raise maybe have his children walk the belt out with him. You know, it's just that just that nice thing for him to have that homecoming, isn't it? After such a tough fight, fighting on a way turf. You know. Yeah, I think the only sort of shame with that Welsh title fight was the fact it wasn't recorded or so. Not many, unless you were there on the night, yeah. you were never gonna. But it's, it's gonna go down as one of the best fights I've watched all year. Yeah. It was such a good performance from the both of them. You could see how much it meant to them both. And the same, you could see how much it meant to Ethan George as well with his Welsh title win. Got a first-round stoppage against uh, Ryan Pocock. Uh, he said to us beforehand that uh, he was going to do it. Yeah, he was ve- very confident heading into it, and he did, to be fair to him. Uh, we've spoken to him since, and his ambitions are to go further now. He's oh, eyeing up yeah. British title level, which, from what you've seen on that night... I don't see really why he couldn't yeah. at least have a go at that at that level. But at the Llanelli show, he'll be fighting the only opponent that he's lost to in his career. He is very confident of getting that loss back from his record and then moving on past that. Yeah. So what are you expecting from him on the Llanelli show? So once again, look, I said... It's nice for Ethan. No, that that type, that's, that fight was supposed to happen a while back, wasn't it? You know, and Ethan could be a lot further along than he is now. But everything is meant to happen when it's meant to happen. So, you know, Ethan was fantastic that night. You know, he's got massive power in them hands, isn't he? You know, he's always been known as a big puncher. And Ethan as well. You know, he's had a different journey. You know, he's he's got he's got to where he's got. He's finally clicked with Brett Parry. You know, and they're building a fantastic. Um, building blocks in that place and looking the result was he, that first round stoppage against Ryan Pocock and now he's looking to go to go further I've got to give it to Ethan you know I've offered him many opponents for this op- for this opportunity you know I offered him Jackson Uzagi, um Harley Collison um, and we also offered Badu Kamari because Badu is obviously Ethan's only loss in fact that fight won small hall fight of the year and we've got it back down in Clatley in his hometown, you know, in fair play to Ethan. He wants to avenge his only loss, as you said, before he moves forward. He said he didn't want to f- move forward before getting that W back. And I think he's going to put on a very special performance. You know, he's going to have all his home fans. It's his hometown. He'll have his homecoming. And I think you might see another special Ethan George knockout on August the 17th at the showdown at the Selwyn. And... Uh- Next, we'll move to another fight that I think has got the potential for a knockout finish. It's uh, Jordan Withers. Uh, he's quite a character, as everyone knows, I think, at this point, but also a very, very talented fighter. Uh, recently been fighting out in Denmark. Uh, 
he's back now fighting on the Clanetti show. Uh, what can you tell us of the fight on that night? So obviously Jordan, um, as everyone has seen, if they saw it on social media, has taken a big, big step up. You know, and fair play to him. You know, and um, when uh, his manager Sean Murray said, "Can is there any room for Jordan to come on the show?" I was thinking, right, okay, what can we do f- with Jordan on that show? You know, Jordan has just come off a fight down in Denmark on TV out in Denmark on a undercard of a world title fight. He was supposed he was going to be fighting on the. Um, the promoters collide card in the O2 with Nielsen's, um, but that didn't that, that something happened there that didn't come off. So I was like, right, okay, what can we do? So I was having conversations back and forth with um, Sean Murray, his manager, and we said, right, what about Boris Crichton? You know, I got in touch with Boris' manager Ian Wilson at St Andrews Boxing Club Academy. Fantastic, fantastic man to work with. You now he's been in boxing a long time. Boris has been in there with Craig Richards, the likes of Callum Simpson. You know, he's been in there with big boys on the on the TV shows. You know, so he's got a lot of experience more than Jordan so as such you know but Jordan fair play to him he's taking the step up and we've got a big 10 round fight the reason it's 10 rounds I will say to you this hasn't been mentioned yet so it is an exclusive for the Punchers podcast considering the Punchers podcast are one of the sponsors of the show on uh, show done at the Selwyn which I do appreciate boys so Jordan's fight pending board approval will be hopefully fingers crossed for the super middleweight Celtic title so you know it's Wales versus Scotland I've got Wales versus Scotland against Toby and and Toby and Anise Anise from his Scottish heritage Toby was actually born in Wales even though he lives in England so Toby it was Battle of the Celts there and we've got Battle of the Celts then with uh, Jordan versus um, Boris Crichton which probably could, is going to potentially steal the show maybe you know we haven't spoken about the main event yet and the the great the the history the the, the hype, the the thing that's going to come around that fight, you know, is massive, and it's and it's brilliant to have it on the show with me and Richie at the show down at the Selwyn on August the 17th in Connectly. Um But yeah, I'm glad we got this fight over the line for Jordan. It's that opportunity for him to win a belt. It's that opportunity potentially for him to move on in the rankings. And who knows what fights we'll see for Jordan down the line? Maybe we'll see Jordan with us versus Ethan George. Who knows? Yeah, that'll certainly be a interesting fight if we can get that together. The, if it's available but uh, yeah we'll move on to the main event this is like you said it's a historic night for Welsh boxing first ever f- female Welsh title uh, between Ashley Johnson and uh, Victoria Perkins I, it's one I'm very much looking forward to and I'm glad that we're going to be there on the night to be involved in it and I'm sure we'll have a lot to do in the build-up yeah, as well. But, yeah, if you just want to sell that really as best you can, like, of how big it is, really. You know, it's ma- it's massive. You know, we've got Lauren Price just coming off a world, world title of a victory in Cardiff. You know, Lauren is massive for female Welsh boxing. Welsh, Welsh boxing, Welsh sport, you know, with all the sports that Lauren's been involved with. And realistically, with her winning the gold medal... She was never on that Welsh title level. No, she was straight past that. You know, British, European, world. You know, that's that's the level that Lauren Price was on. So, there's never been women a women's Welsh title fight. There's not even a belt. There wasn't even a belt in place originally. You know, we've we've put this to the to the Welsh board. They've agreed it. There's a belt being made for it. You know, I'm excited to see. You now look at the female British title. There's a slight slight difference to the male version. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do for the for the female belt on the night. Um, but yeah, so Ashley and Victoria. Ashley is um, obviously a local Swansea girl. Victoria is a Swansea girl as well, but more further down the valleys in Pontadawi. You know, they both fought on the Bramman Hall show. Okay, Ashley won against Shamaletta in a very, very good fight. You were there yourselves. You know, it was it was a fantastic main event. Fair play to Ashley and and Jamaletta put on a fantastic performance. You know, but Ashley showed a dog and a, and a, a determination and a fitness, and she came out on top. Victoria, on the other hand, unfortunately, she didn't get the decision that night against Lindsay Bozyski, and we saw what Lindsay went on to do when she fought for the Commonwealth title up here against Amy Andrew um, in in Essex. Um, but 
we're super, super, super excited to have this fight on in, in Knecht. It's, it's, it's an honour and it's a privilege to be able to put this fight and have our names to this, you know, but not just not for us, but for the girls, you know, to have it close to home, you know, to be the two first females. They'll go down in history to be the only, the two females to ever fight for the first ever Welsh title. You know, we've got a lot of build-up going to be going on with yourselves. You know, we're, we're looking at doing different things, give it to the to the viewers. You know, we're looking to do some some types of gloves are off things, you know, promo videos, everything, you know, trying to build this fight and give it what it deserves. They're going to put in, they're going to put on a massive, massive display in there. You know, they're both training hard. You know, if you look on social media, you can see Victoria's posting all the time. She's doing eight, eight rounds of pad work and then, then sparring and then running and everything else. She's already in the gym. You know, we're, we're, what are we now coming into July and we were about six weeks, six, seven weeks out the way from the show. So the hard work and, determination is going in now all the tickets are out for this fight they're selling tickets like hot kicks it's looking like it's going to be a sellout you know there's a lot a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that's going to make this night massive but what what more to say is the fact of this fight will never be taken away out of history it's always going to be in history for these girls that they were the two girls to fight for the Welsh title but who's that who's that girl that's going to go down in history isn't it and be known as the first ever female Welsh champion is it going to be Ashley? Is it going to be Victoria? Who knows? You know, Victoria's trained by Tony Bogg. Ashley's trained by Enzo Macronelli. You know, they're both two different types of fighters. Ashley's coming from a K1 background. Victoria's coming from a kickboxing background. You know, Victoria, Ash, Victoria's been like multiple weight world champion at kickboxing. Ashley's won multiple titles at K1. They've sparred each other in, in kickboxing and K1. They know each other's styles, you know. Is a big, big story around this, and it can be, it's going to be a very, very exciting build-up. But the main thing is, who is going to go down as the history maker? They're both history makers, but the history maker in the fact of who will be the first women's Welsh champion. And I'm super, super excited and super looking forward to seeing who that person is. You know? Yeah, it's certainly going to be a very interesting fight. Like you said, the two of them know each other very well. They've spent a lot of time in the yeah. gym together, sparring with each other. But the both of them really should be very proud of the moment, regardless of what happens on the night. 100%. In terms of, like you said, that will never be taken away from them. They will go down in the history books. Uh, also got to give credit, of course, to yourself and Richie for putting in all the effort we've seen you put in, not just for the car, the whole card, but for them two to get this fight over the line. But yeah, we're really looking forward to the night now. Like you said, it's six, seven weeks out. I don't think there's many tickets left, but I'm sure if anyone's interested in getting down on the night and supporting more, will be a historic night in Welsh boxing. I'm sure they'll know where to find you, or they will certainly after this. But yeah, I'd just like to say thank you for taking the time to sit down and speak to us, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the show. Yeah, no, no, we'd be um, just just quickly to add to that. You know, tickets hit up all the fighters. You know, you know all the fighters are on the card. Let's get the tickets. You know, Small old boxing, it isn't the easiest for these fighters. You know, it's not the razzmatazz or the big TV shows and everything like that. If the fighters don't sell the tickets, then they don't earn as much as they do. You know, that's that's the reality of, of small hall show boxing. But, on the other hand, let's run through the card again. You know, you've got Ashley versus Victoria for the Welsh title. You've got Jordan Withers versus Boris, potentially pending Robe approval for the Celtic title. You've got Anise Taj versus Toby Vermeer. You know, you've got Ethan... in trying to repeat a revenge, you know, because Badu, Badu is not, is no mug. You know, he could come and uh, come and get it, but uh, uh, Ethan is very, very confident that he's going to come and, and get and make it a revenge. You've got Angelo making his home day, his um, homecoming. We've got JD Cavero, we've got Lewis Parfit, we've got Levi Griffiths, Griffiths. we've got L Lewis, we've got um, Angelo, Angelo Willie. You know, they're, they're, they're all the homecomings on there. You know, there's so many great fights on there. How are we going to run this show? You know, who, who are we going to put? You know, but the main event is set. It's set as Victoria and it's set as Ashley, and that's going to go down in history. I want to just say thank you to you guys as the sponsors. In fairness to him, even though he's in the away, away corner, Obista Boxer, he sponsored the, he sponsored the, t the show as well. You know, and then we've got Next Car as well, which is a car garage in the local area, which we really appreciate. So if you are looking for any second hand cars, then go and hit up Next Car. And then we've also got Peter Morgan Property Group, which I really thank Jonathan Morgan for coming on board as a sponsor to you know to help to help this show, you know, because small hall show is, is quite hard. It's, it's it's a lot of money to put on a small hall show, you know, and we appreciate these sponsors. Without these sponsors, these things aren't possible. And we're super, super excited 
to get all these shows on, you know, and there's every single fight from top to bottom can steal this show. And I suppose, I'm assuming you'd agree as well, you know. And to be honest, probably one of the best Welsh cards put on in, in a while, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a, a very good night of Welsh boxing. We're looking forward to it and we'll uh, be catching up with you again soon anyway, chatting about it and all the content we've got planned for it. But yeah, thank you again for sitting down today and we'll catch you soon. Yeah, no worries, too, buddy.